my name is Becky Christofferson and I've been a Suzuki teacher for 30 years, trained through the Suzuki Association of the Americas and also grew up as a Suzuki kid and studied with Dr. Shinichi Suzuki when I was 12, which was an amazing privilege. So today's quick answers video, we're going to talk about when and why to shift. There are many reasons. Um, and some of it comes down to personal preference, where it just feels better in a different position for you. And by and large, that's usually fine. But there are some rules too. So the most obvious is when you have to play notes that don't exist in lower positions, like at the beginning of the concerto in E minor, the first movement by Vivaldi. start in third position rather than make a shift because that's disruptive. Shifting in general is disruptive so you want to be really prudent about when and why you shift. If I were to shift I would be doing a same note shift playing three with three on A and then shifting to one on A. I certainly wouldn't do a same finger shift because I don't really have any way of knowing where that C is if I'm shifting from three to three like that. Very risky. At least this way. That one is a much more secure shift and then I know where the C is. You always want to know where your one is when you're shifting. And a three to three shift like that would be very difficult to keep track of one. Another reason might be that you want to avoid um, an extended four. So even back in Louis Gavat in book two, in the scale, you could play the C as an extended four. Or you could shift. to second position, and back again, or you could shift to third position. So that's an example of personal preference. If you have small hands, you might prefer to shift. I prefer to teach a shift there just because it's the first time we get to shift in the Suzuki book, so I like to use that piece to introduce shifting to second position. And then you might need to shift simply because you don't want the brightness of another string. So not a Suzuki song, but Melody by Tchaikovsky. I could start on the E string, but that's awkward because I'm starting on a bright string and I'm giving myself a string crossing right away to a fourth finger. And if I play it all in third position, I have the nice dark sound of the A string and I don't have to deal with the string crossing. And Tchaikovsky being romantic, I can shift here and with a little glissando and then that makes it more stylistic. So you can shift because you need to reach the notes. You can shift because you don't want to do other fingering. You can shift because you don't want a string crossing. And um, that's pretty much it. So I would not be shifting for the sake of shifting, like in Minuet 2. There are a lot of string crossings. I'm not really sure that that fingering is much simpler. Oh, and that reminds me, the other one is that in the Baroque era in general, there was not a lot of shifting going on. Remember that the violin was different and they did not explore the upper regions of the violin the way later composers did. And they liked the open strings, the open E. We kind of tend to avoid the open E now because it's so bright. But the Baroque violin didn't have that problem. So uh, you'll get lots of type string crossing.
crossings with that nice bright E string and in Barothes if that's appropriate and desirable. So I hope that helps. Happy practicing.